Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Let's get after it. It's hot out there on an unprecedented level. Monday, July the 3rd was the hottest day ever recorded around the world, according to data from the US-based National Centers for Environmental Prediction. The world's average temperature reached 17 degrees Celsius or 62 degrees Fahrenheit, which scientists say is the highest since records began. Experts say the hottest day is only the first in a series of new climate records to be set this year. This heat wave was made 30 times more likely due to the climate crisis, according to World Weather Attribution. Wouldn't, in theory, that increased temperature, since they're talking 62 degrees Fahrenheit, just increase the growing season? Because uh, that would seem like a net positive. This is the weekend's most recent concert, and you won't believe me when I say this, but there is some demonic energy being harvested here. And after watching his new show, The Idol, which I'll be making a video on, this makes total sense. I mean, you have people fully clothed in robes, dancing in circles around this floating figure. And you'll see what The weekend is wearing towards the end of the video, but just watch this. It's almost pointless to keep watching these at this point. All these celebrities are doing all this stuff. It seems like every single concert that you see video of now has got some sort of satanic imagery in it. They're all up to it. That poor cow. <laughs> that dude was running, wasn't he? Oh, man. I can't imagine. All I can think about is what it would be like to be that cow. Getting hit in the back of the head and all over your entire body with baseball-sized hell. Whew. <laughs> Я не знаю, что это такое. Аллаху Акбар. Пусть кто-нибудь объяснит, если не ангелы, что это такое? Много-много ангелов, братья, рядами. Так, дыр! Как волны в море, как волны в море они ходят туда-сюда. Рядами ходят они, как Аллах обещал в Куране. Так они и ходят рядами. Лейко, Аллаху Акбар. Аллаху Акбар. Аллаху Акбар. Аллаху Акбар. Shoo, 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 shoo. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going solely off the audio on this one, but I, I mean, it looks like there's something up there. I'm going to bet it's U.S. surveillance technology. And that's probably what's causing all these anomalies in these clouds that we keep getting videos of. This, probably, this, this video right here probably explains it all. There are a lot of questions tonight after the Secret Service found what's believed to be a bag of cocaine at the White House. Sources tell CBS News it was discovered in a common workspace in the West Wing on Sunday night. The area is accessible to tour groups. Now, the Secret Service is investigating just how it got there. The president and his family were at Camp David Sunday night. I just wanted to put this video in there so I could give my opinion on it. Uh, I think it belonged to the guy that everybody else, uh, all the rest of you think it belonged to.
We're all thinking the same person. Folks in the orchard industry, even backyard gardeners, should take care of their plants. You can see scattered showers still showing up on the Pacific Northwest radar throughout the region. The heaviest, and of course, well to our north. Here in Southern Oregon and Northern California, uh, we've got a bit of an unusual situation. Now, this first portion of the radar cycle, fairly bland and typical, but then you see these bands of very distinct cloud cover moving into the region. That is not rain, that is not snow, believe it or not. Military aircraft flying through the region is dropping chaff. Small bits of aluminum, sometimes it's made of plastic or uh, even uh, metallicized, uh, metallicized paper products, but it's used as an anti radar issue, and obviously they're up there practicing. Now, they won't confirm that, but I was in the Marine Corps for many years, and I'll tell you right now, that's what it is. Uh, 50 in Metro. Don't worry, everybody, it's the government. They've got your best interest at heart, and I'm sure they've figured out a way to make sure that stuff doesn't seep into our groundwater. What the hell did I just take a photo of with my telescope? Looks like an atom, man. Look at that. Wow. That dude might have just accidentally photographed dark matter or something. <laughs> That's insane. He needs to get that to scientists and see what the heck that is. He needs to post that on uh, on X and tag Elon Musk in it. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, I make a new video just like this one every single day. It would be awesome if you would subscribe and come back tomorrow to join me. See you tomorrow. Welcome to the secret underbelly of London. For the most part, you would never see this, only at low tide. Now this is another location. I showed you a location before and that was on the south bank of the Thames. Now this one is on the north bank. This is a second spot where you can find these secret emblems. Now as I said, for the most part these will be underwater and they won't be visible, but on the low tide uh, they reveal themselves. Now each post has three emblems and each emblem is different to the next. And each one of these emblems tells a story. And you have to decipher and decode the story by looking at what's on these emblems. And then their true meaning reveals themselves. Let me know your... That video really is just kind of a little bit more evidence that there were way more people here before than we realize. Wait, so the CEO of Bud Light has the strangest path. All right, so he went to this place called Bucknell University. And then in 2006, he went to Harvard Business School. But let's see what he did in between those two. Oh, um, he just happened to be in the CIA. And then I guess the Harvard degree fast-tracked him to senior management. And then less than 10 years later, he was the CEO. The CIA to Harvard pipeline. The CIA to Harvard pipeline. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really taken place. We, we've seen from the Twitter files when all that stuff was released. I mean, they had a, an ex-operative that was their main lawyer inside the facilities that worked in the building. I mean, it's going on everywhere. It's in every media outlet. We all know it. I'm, I'm about to panic in about three, two, one. What the is going on here? That's what you get for flying Spirit Airlines. <laughs> if I owned an airline to advertise, I would just put that video of Spirit Airlines on and be like, at the end, we're not Spirit Airlines. Well, well, well. We meet again, sir. How are you? Yeah, back up. Yeah. You better start talking a little nicer to that thing. It could become alive at any minute. I don't like all this AI robot stuff walking around us, especially those things, because I've seen them in China with guns mounted to them. Did the CIA use psychic spies? A declassified document revealed the CIA's Project Stardate was indeed a real and documented program. It was a classified project conducted by the Central Intelligence Agency in the 1970s through the 1990s. The project's main objective was to investigate the potential military and intelligence applications of psychic phenomena, particularly remote viewing. Under Project Stargate, the CIA engaged in research and experimentation with individuals who claimed to possess psychic abilities, such as the ability to perceive distant locations or events beyond normal human senses. 
The program involved conducting remote viewing sessions where these psychic spies were tasked with describing specific targets or locations, often hidden from their... Yeah, I believe in remote viewing. Heck, I've had such intense deja vu before that I could almost drive myself to a location that I'd never been at, just based off memory alone. So I totally believe that you could, if you can pick up on energy like that in the future to where you could see an event play out in your in your head years beforehand why not be able to see an event that's taking place now in another location interestingly a geologist who was traveling with us in egypt made an astute observation that connects the wedge and chisel method to the stone nub phenomenon found around the world on many megalithic sites we can find both large and small stone nubs or protrusions coming out of the blocks and it's a mystery that's been explored by many researchers. If your quarrying method is wedge and chisel with the aim to split stone blocks, then it's incredibly unlikely that you'll end up with a nub as a result. Wedge and chisel quarrying either splits the stone in a mostly straight line or it fails and only a chunk of stone is removed. A good example of a failure is seen here, when an attempt to split a slab from the huge megalithic granite blocks of the Assyrian failed, leaving only the corner removed. You just don't get nubs from wedge and chisel quarrying, and it's a seemingly obvious connection when you think about it, but it's not one that I'd made. It does make sense. You're not going to try to split a rock in half and leave a little almost Lego fitting piece sticking out of the one side of it so what did they use to cut those things clearly they had some much more advanced tool than what we realize or than what we even have today because we can't replicate those not the way they did It's crazy. I'm sitting here watching this as there's tornado warnings going on. And uh, in my county, just got released from tornado warning. So we're all clear. There is a theory that at some point in the near future, global elites will use hidden and highly sophisticated technology to simulate an extraterrestrial invasion on Earth in order to assert their dominance and conquer the world. When the staged extraterrestrial invasion begins, a false messiah will emerge amidst the chaos in each country, and this individual will have the power to protect the people and halt the invasion. The false messiah will then become the leader of the new world religion, ultimately uniting the world under a single religion as the Antichrist, as described in Apocalypse. The increased presence of UFOs in recent years is seen as a sign that global elites are training their system to be flawlessly prepared for the final invasion. Additionally, the growing development of advanced technologies, such as artificial intelligence and 5G, is believed to be aimed at perfecting a simulated extraterrestrial invasion that will deceive the entire planet into believing in the false mistake. This one sounds like a far-fetched conspiracy theory. However, they're telling us they're trying to do all this. So even if that's not the method at which they're trying to get us there, they're trying to get us there. And they're going to use whatever crooked, evil, conniving way they can to get their fingers around your throat. That's just the harsh reality of it. That's who we're dealing with. But we still have a chance to fight them off.
I feel like I've seen every single one of those in one of those street food vending videos coming out of uh, Taiwan or uh, Indonesia or something. I know y'all hear the footsteps. I'm like shaking already. <laughs> so early in the morning too. See, I know you hear him pacing in there. Get out of here, man. That's too easy to fake, so I'm going to assume that it is because it's just a door opening. Uh, it could be creepy in the right circumstances. In other circumstances, you're going to assume that it's a draft and not even think twice about it. The one good thing I'll give to this video is the guy's performance. If he is faking the performance, like I feel like he genuinely thinks there's something haunting his bedroom. So... <laughs> Kudos to him. That was great, great performance. They're still out there. Good God, people. <laughs> well, there it is, our daily reminder. Stay out of the water. Seven point four million dollars, <laughs> and if you have it following you, you can't have a conversation because of the noise. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't spend that much on a robot. I wouldn't even spend half that much. I'm gonna hold out and wait for one of those robots that Elon Musk's building. And uh, if about two or three years in, they haven't attacked and killed anyone yet, then I might get one and maybe lop its legs off so it could scoot around the house and bring me coffee and stuff which is the CEO of a company called D-Wave. Most successful theory of nature makes, and that is that there are an enormous number, mind-bogglingly large number, of parallel realities, as real as this one, that have different consistent histories. So imagine a world where all of the laws of physics as we know them are obeyed, but different decisions were made along the way. Different decisions at the level of tiny microscopic particles, different decisions all the way up to what you chose to eat for lunch and whether you chose to come to the session or not. Quantum mechanics makes a very specific prediction that all of those are as real as the thing that you remember. And this is bizarre because we don't see those other things. But science has reached the point now where we can build machines that exploit those other worlds. And quantum computers are perhaps the most exciting of all of these. So yeah, there you have it. Gyorgy Rowe says we can collaborate with parallel worlds using quantum computers and accelerate in our technologies. Now, personally, I think the whole parallel universe idea is actually a facade to hide what's really going on. Through these quantum computers, I believe they are collaborating with the spiritual wickedness in high places that the Bible speaks of. 
I don't believe in parallel realities, but I do believe in a world that's parallel to ours because the Bible and many other cultures speak of a world that's parallel to ours. I don't believe that they're contacting uh, any form of the afterlife or anything like that because I don't believe that God would allow that. As far as parallel universes go, I wonder, thinking back to deja vu, deja vu for me has always been the experience of highly detailed memories of things that had not yet happened, but whenever they did happen, it would be 90% of what I remembered but the ending or something significant would be changed. It wouldn't be a person. It would be the way the scenario played out. So I wonder if that's actually a memory of a event in a parallel universe that has made its way over into your head and you're tapping into another you. Hmm. That one's interesting. I'm not going to pretend that doesn't look creepy as hell, but I doubt the goat's going to eat that chicken. In all seriousness, that's probably one of the best weekends to go visit Chicago because that was probably one of the lowest crime rates that weekend uh, of any weekend they had had in years. Well, what they did is they had, um, you know, a camera looking at a space with people in it. Um, that's sort of like coming in from one eye. The other eye is the radio signals, so sonar from the uh, Wi-Fi router. And they just learned to predict, like, this is where the human beings are. Then they took away the camera. so. All the AI had was the language of radio signals bouncing around a room, and this is what they're able to reconstruct. Real-time 3D pose estimation, right? So suddenly, AI has turned every Wi-Fi router into a camera that can work in the dark, specially tuned for tracking living beings. Why did he have to put it in such a terrifying manner? <laughs> every wireless router is a see in the dark camera specially tuned for finding living beings welcome to 1984. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, no, thank you. Famous one is the American, the all-American breakfast. You get your eggs, you get yeah. your bacon, you get your sausages, you get your orange juice, you get your milk. But a hundred years ago, that wasn't breakfast. That wasn't the American breakfast. A breakfast wasn't a thing. Edward Benet, known as the father of propaganda, launched the breakfast campaign because the meat industry came to him and said, dude, we're slacking on meat sales. What can we do? So he's like, mm, it's too hard to convince the average person. I need to go to the people that are already sources of authority. So what did he go and do? He went and convinced who? The doctors, the pediatricians, that breakfast was the most essential diet with all these studies and all these experiments and all this bullshit. It was all paid propaganda. So Edward Benet launches the breakfast propaganda the campaign and turns breakfast into a rousing success. He did it as well with cigarettes. That doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, I used to be about 40 pounds heavier than I am right now. And the way I lost it was I stopped eating breakfast and lunch and started eating just one meal a day. Still eat all my calories and sometimes more, but still maintain a healthy body weight. Something that no one talks about. When the glaciers melt, where does the water go? You know the answer. Just in the ocean? Back in the ocean. Okay. So, but this is now 
non-salty water going into the ocean. So you're mixing fresh water with brackish water. And they occupy different places in the vertical profile of the ocean. And because salt water is heavier than fresh water. So fresh water occupies the top. Right. But it's not as salty as the water at the below. And there are circulations in the ocean. The combinations of all these circulations create the stability of the ocean. If you disrupt that, oh my gosh. Does anyone else find it nearly impossible to listen to Neil deGrasse Tyson talk? Ever since I heard him on Rogan, just constantly interrupting him, I've just found it so difficult to even pay attention to the guy because I don't want to give him my attention because he tries to steamroll people and demand their attention. Could Michael Jackson be walking among us in disguise? In 2015, Michael Jackson's son, Prince Jackson, and Omar Batty, who grew up alongside Michael, organized a boat party. It was very hot and everyone was walking around in short sleeve t-shirts. But one of them was standing in a long sleeve shirt, tie, pants, and fedora. As you know, Michael Jackson was allergic to the sun and could not stand in the sun without a hat and umbrella. So who was this person was so camouflaged in this heat? Is Michael Jackson still with us? If he's alive, he has to go disguise to spend time with his family. If you are wondering who this mysterious person is, wait for the second part. Unfortunately, I could not locate the second part, but um, yeah, I don't think Michael Jackson's alive. I mean, they sentenced a guy to prison for giving him the wrong meds, so I'm pretty sure they had a body. I'm pretty sure that they confirmed before they sent that guy to prison that, they, that he was still... That he was actually gone. Then get ready to oil the track. He hangs out the front of the train. We locked the lock bar, so this is locked. I just get in here and put my knee against the pad and brace myself. Those Gino has to make this run twice, once for each side of the track. Those bars fail all the time. Growing up as a kid, I was afraid of coasters, especially the jackrabbit. My first job was working on the jackrabbit. Wow, what a freaking lunatic. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I wonder if that guy worked there until that thing ate him. Golly. All right, that's the end of this one. I'm going to go ahead and stop it right there. I will be back tomorrow with another video. I hope you guys will come back to join me. And I will see you tomorrow.